Hey guys, I'm meteorologist Chris Tomer. Let's talk some mountain weather here and the snow is underway. We're already cutting into the grand totals that we had talked about. For example, um, the peak snow is happening now in the Sierra and that'll run through the morning of the 9th. So it's happening now and then that storm will move into the interior and then uh, the Wasatch and the Tetons are up for their peak snowfall between I'd say tonight, the prime time's probably tomorrow in the Wasatch, and then it kind of um, is residual into the uh, the morning of the 10th. Tetons, same type of timeline as the Wasatch, and then all of that would then kind of slide through Colorado, but it's more of a more of a brush, more of a glancing blow in Colorado than a direct hit because the low is going to track so far to the north. So let me just show you what I'm I'm seeing now. About five inches reported in the Tetons so far, and there's more to come. But that's part of the accumulation that we talked about. About five in the Wasatch, there's more on the way. So that's the view in the Tetons right now. But Jackson Hole, obviously nothing spectacular. Uh, but here's the here's the actual setup. With the storm, big area of low pressure on infrared satellite moving into into California, and the orographics are solid. The atmospheric river contribution is very weak. So to really maximize snowfall in the Sierra, you, you want to put a check mark in all of these boxes. Well, there's just barely a check mark in the uh, the atmospheric river column, but all the other ingredients are pretty good as far as forcing elements. That big low will then eventually break loose, and then it's prime time for the Wasatch, the Tetons, and then a little bit moderate accumulations in Colorado. I wrote about it this morning on my blog, chrystomer.com. Please subscribe if you haven't. Um, you'll get notified whenever there's an update, which is pretty much every day um, for in ski season, during ski season. And I look at a lot of other things besides skiing on here. It's generally a mountain weather type update each day. So there are my bullet points if you just want to take a look at those. And then, you know, some people just look at those and check out. That's fine. Um, I look at the jet stream, and this is key. This is something you'll find in most of my updates. I've actually got this in my show high res, so I'll bring this in. So this is the jet for tomorrow. This would be when most of the, the orographics and the snow slide through the Wasatch and the Tetons. And then some of that, you can see the jet streak moving into Colorado. Tomorrow will be a very windy day in the mountains of Colorado, and it will help to generate some snow, but I don't expect anything heavy, probably moderate accumulations, four to 10 inches in most places in Colorado. But at this point, it's done. It's done in California. The whole thing is, is winding down and the low is moving away. So let me move back to the blog and we'll talk about the timing of this. And this is another thing you're going to find. Um, let me just run this out. So watch the animation. There's uh, 6 a.m. Wednesday, 6 a.m. Thursday, and there is 6 a.m. Friday. Um, and this is something, and by the time this low is gone, the pattern is over. The storm cycle is done and some high pressure builds in. The only thing down the road is a dry trough of low pressure that slides through. Um, so I'll run this out again. Normally I'll load this into my show full screen, but I just didn't have time today. But this is, this is what you'll find in the blog updates every single day. This future radar and satellite, which gives you a, a way to track the timing of everything and plan out your, um, your powder days and your trips. So that's always on there. And there is the final day on the 13th, Sunday at 11 p.m. Um, so I also look at a lot of other things because wind is so important to mountaineers. Sometimes if there's something that stands out to me, I'll blog about it, talk about it in this forecast. It's going to be very cold on the 14ers in Colorado um, by the time we get into the wake of this storm system, below zero on Longs, well below zero on Quandry on the 10th. And the winds are strong on both peaks before and after. And then let's go into forecast snowfall. That This forecast chart I have on here is actually um, from early this morning. So what I've done is, and, and some of the snow has already fallen. So what I did was, is I produced an updated version to take into account some of the snow that has already fallen. So this is what, this is as far as additional snow that has yet to fall on this chart. And you can see in California, we've got another foot to maybe two feet in Mammoth that has yet to fall. In the Wasatch, another 15 has yet to fall. Same thing for Jackson Hole, Grand Targhee, roughly another 15. I went with high-end numbers for the Tetons this morning. I backed off a little bit on those. Potentially another 15 on the way there. Good stuff for Brian Head. And in Colorado, again, moderate accumulations, 4 to 10, maybe less in some places on the way. I think Big Sky, Discovery, Bridge or Bowl, and Sun Valley do okay, 4 to 10 inches. So that's the way things look to me right now. 
big storm coming through again. This is the last storm of this storm cycle. Um, oh, this is pretty stark. Let me show you what the forecast is for 11, 11 to 11, 14. Nothing there. Bone dry. A dry, cold trough of low pressure swings through, and otherwise, I just don't have anything. So when this storm cycle's done, it's done for a little while. Thanks, guys, for tuning in here. Always appreciate it. Take care.